Oh my goodness. I was trying to figure out <laughs> every time the phone does updates and things like that. I don't know what they're doing. And I'm like looking and talking and I think it's recording and it wasn't recording anything. <laughs> oh God. Welcome. Thank you for new subscribers. Welcome. Welcome all subscribers, family. And let me tell you, I have a story, but you know me. I have to tell you what's going on. So, the kittens are getting bigger and stronger. They're eating, um, I started them on eating like the, the mushy stuff. And now they can eat the, um, they're like little tiny squirrels. You been, I don't know if you guys know about like little tiny chiclets that they come in different colors. That's how small it is. It's very tiny. So they're eating that because I think it's better. The, the one that is softer, one of them got a little bit of a very soft stool. You know what I mean? So we don't want to go there. <laughs> anyway, I think they are... What's it today? What is it today? Today is the what? 14th? The 14th. So they are seven weeks. <gasps> They're seven weeks. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. And I haven't seen Mama Cat. You know, um, we call her Charlie. I haven't seen her like giving them, like nursing them, giving them their, her milk. More like they're eating on their own. And... There's a lot of cleaning. They don't want to do the litter box thing. And I'm trying to teach them. And I don't know how. I'm just watching YouTube videos to learn. So I go and I put them there. And I go like this with a little paw. I say, this is where you pee. Well, they get out of the box and pee in the corner. I'm like, no. That's not where you go. <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm not worried about that right now too much. Because they're still really young. But I was told that, oh no, don't worry, once the mom uses the little box, which she learned quickly, being an outside cat, you know, she learned in like one day. And and they told me, the vet told me, no, uh, she's going to teach them how to use the little box. No. <laughs> I think she's used to me cleaning it. So she's like, that's your job. Anywho, they're doing great. On the 26th, Charlie's going to get surgery. She's going to get spayed. We still don't know if we want to let her out. She's anxious to go out, but I think because she hasn't had the surgery, they, they tell me that they, she will come down more, and then there's some males outside one of them is her son i can't remember if the other ones are hers or her mom's but they're like i only have like right now outside maybe four males but they come and go and then when when i put food for them you know they other ones kind of come they eat they leave <laughs> I don't know, but it's it's been fun. It's been learning experience for us. It's, they are so funny. I did like a little video of them, uh, but it was I think it was still photos. It's just it's so hard to film them because they get under uh, the chairs and everything. So, but they're doing good. Other than that. <sighs> I've been having a little backache, but um, I decided to do a story, and it's called, let's get into the story, because if, if I keep talking, I will never do the story, right? It is called Ready to Read, Level 3, Pinky and Rex and the New Baby, by James Howe, illustrated by Melissa Sweet. This is the book. Look, look at the little... I think it's interesting. Now, they say in this book that level three 
It's rich vocabulary, more challenging stories, and longer chapters. If you're interested and you want to read those books. So, let's start. Oh, Michi. Oh, that's another thing. There are so many mosquitoes outside. And I ordered one of those mosquito sappers. Because <laughs> they have me all over my arms, my legs. It's bad, guys. For Elise, I, Adam, Lauren, and Joanna, John and Ari, or Ari, I don't know, for Lenny. Okay. Chapter one. Finally, huh? Right? <laughs> the um, Invisible Girl. They just have a little rattle. See? The Invisible Girl. There. You can post that if you want to read it with mom or dad or by yourself. That'd be awesome. Rex couldn't believe it. We're going to have a what? She asked. A baby, her mother answered with a big smile. Oh, my Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Her father was smiling, too. You know, we've been talking about this for a long time now, Rex. Well, it's finally going to happen. What do you think? Mm, I don't think it's going to be a thrill. Rex shrugged. It's okay. She said, can I go over to Pinky's house? Her mother's smile faded. But Rex, that's all right, said Rex's father. We can talk about it another time. You go ahead, Rex. Rex ran out of the house as fast as she could. By the time she reached Pinky's house across the street, her cheeks were burning. What's wrong? Pinky asked as soon as she saw her. We're going to have a baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Almost spitting the words. Spitting? Like... <laughs> but that's neat, Rex, Pinky said. It'll be fun having a baby around. I don't want to have a baby around, said Rex, plopping herself down on the front step. Pinky sat down next to her. Rex was surprised that Pinky didn't understand. He was her best friend. And besides, he had a pesky little sister. Wasn't he always telling Rex how lucky she was to be an only child? Oh, <gasps> Look, she was shrugging her shoulders like, um, I really don't care for this baby. <laughs> I guess it's a shock at the beginning, but later on you get used to it, right? All right. I was an only child. And it sucked because I was bored all the time. <laughs> I like things the way they are, Rick said. Just me and my mom and dad. Now they'll spend all their time with the baby. I bet they won't even know I'm around. Oh, that's not true. What do you think? The thing is that babies require a lot of time in the beginning. And later on, you'll be able to play together. Sure they will, said Pinky. Uh-uh, I'll be the invisible girl. Pinky tried not to laugh, but he couldn't help himself. Don't be dopey. Hey, you want to help me put together my new model? Rex shook her head. Want to go for a ride on our bikes? Rex shook her head again. How about a game of soccer? Rex looked up. Do you have a ball? She asked. Soccer was her new favorite sport. Well, not a real soccer ball, but... Then forget it, said Rex. Resting her chin in her hands. I don't want to play anyway. Oh, she's sad. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to do? Let me see. There we go. Uh, well, you can't turn back the clock. <laughs> the baby's already cooking. <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't know. Yes, I do. What? Pinky asked. Rex started to tell him, then wonder if he'd understand. <gasps> oh, nothing, she said, but she was already thinking about it. She was going to come up with a plan to make sure she didn't turn into the invisible girl. Oh, my gosh. What is she going to plan? 
Look, there we go. <gasps> oh, there's the other page. Okie dokie. The. Oh, Matthew. I thought it said the Matthew. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chapter 2 Meeting Matthew. A few days later, Pinky watched from his bedroom window as the car pulled into the driveway of the house across the street. They're home, he shouted. His little sister Amanda ran into the room, clutching a pink dinosaur dressed in a diaper and bib. I was just feeding Poopsie. Poopsie! <laughs> she announced, squeezing it beside her brother at the window. Let me see. Oh, look, there it is. It's not an it, it's a he, said Pinky. Mom says his name is Matthew. Oh, he's so cute, Amanda squealed. You can't see his face from here, Pinky said. It's all wrapped up. Amanda shook her head at Pinky. He's a baby, she explained. All babies are cute. Don't you know that? She shoved the pink dinosaur into his face. Do you think Poopsie is cute? Pinky groaned. Suddenly, he heard his name being called. He looked out the window again and saw Rex waving to him from across the street. He looked happy. Come on over, Rex shouted. <laughs> oh my goodness, these kids are so funny. Here it is. <laughs> Okay. Moments later, Pinky's entire family had gathered across the street to greet their neighbors and meet the little bundle in Rex's mother's, Rex's mother's arms. Can I hold him, Mom? Rex was saying when they got there. In a minute, her mother said. She was opening the blanket so Pinky and his family could all get a look. Oh, he's so cute, Amanda cried. She held the dinosaur high up in the air. Look, Poopsie, a new little friend. You two can play together. Pinky had never imagined anyone's face could be so tiny. He's kind of cute, he said to Rex, in a squinch top sort of way. All oh, babies look, at, look like that at first. Rex said in a voice of an expert, Please, Mom, let me hold him. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, they're so cute. Look. There she's holding her dinosaur. Whatever it was. Was it a dinosaur? I forgot. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, said her mother. She handed the baby to Rex, who took him very carefully. She's good with him, Pinky's mother commented. Oh, yes, Rex is going to be a wonderful big sister, said Rex's mother. She's already, she already is a wonderful big sister, said Rex's father. Rex beamed. Her plan was working perfectly. Okay, I'm confused. I don't know what she's planning, but it doesn't sound good. What do you think? This is the other page. Chapter 3. Where did the baby come from? Whoa! <laughs> the big question. That night at dinner, Pinky asked, Is Rex adopted? No, said his mother. But Matthew is. Oh, that's true, Pinky's mother said. She noticed Amanda slipping some string beans into the napkin on her lap. Try eating them, she should suggested. <laughs> Amanda looked surprised. What? Oh, I was going to eat them. I uh, was just saving them for later, for a treat. <laughs> right, said Pinky. Nothing like a few cold string beans while you watch TV. Amanda glared at Pinky and dumped the string beans back on her plate. She was busted. <laughs> Where did the baby come from anyway? Pinky asked. Well, it's like this, Pinky's father said. Hang on. I'm so thirsty. 
<clears throat> drawing out the words. Pinky knew they were now on an important subject and his father was trying to find out just the right thing to say. Are we adopted? <laughs> Amanda asked. She made a great show of slowly and noisily sucking a string being into her mouth. Her father shook his head. No, your mother gave birth to both of you. And Rex's mother gave birth to her. But when Rex's parents wanted to have a second child, they found they couldn't. Oh, I see how it is. Oh, is it? Is it? There we go. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. <laughs> I know the light is not very good in here. I'm sorry. Why? Pinky asked. Pinky's father shrugged. It just happens sometimes and no one knows why. Then who did give birth to Matthew? Amanda asked. Matthew's birth mother is a young woman who loved him very much, said their mother. But she realized she simply couldn't take care of him. Oh, that could be the hardest thing to do, but it could be a blessing. Why not? asked Amanda. I don't know enough about her to tell you that, her mother said. Perhaps she was very poor and already had children. Maybe she was young and knew that Matthew needed someone older to be a good mother to him. I do know this. She loved him so much that she was willing to let other people become his parents. She knew that that would be the best for him. Pinky nodded thoughtfully. You know what I don't get? He asked. I don't get why Rex is acting, acting so weird. First, she didn't even want this baby, and now she's so happy about it. Maybe her feelings changed when she actually met him. His mother answered, you think? There they are talking at the table. Okay. Mother answered. You were just the opposite when Amanda was born. You could hardly wait for the baby to come. And then when we brought her home, you took one look at her, marched up to your room, packed a bag. Oh my gosh. Told us you were moving to Disney World. <laughs> Pinky turned and looked at his sister. Uh, who had to string Bing's fangs hanging out of her mouth? Is that bag still packed? He asked. Oh my goodness. You gotta see this. Can you see the little string beans? <laughs> oh, she sure do not want to eat those. She's trying really hard. Chapter 4. I'm the big sister. The next day, Rex's two grandmothers and two grandfathers came to visit. Each set of grandparents gave her a t-shirt that read, I'm the big sister. Her mother and father had already bought her a similar one before they got to get Matthew. So now she has three. In order to avoid hurting anyone's feelings, she planned to wear one in the morning a different one in the afternoon, and a third one in the evening, oh my lord. So I guess you feel pretty good about having a baby brother after all, Pinky said to Rex late afternoon, that afternoon. Rex had just put on the third t-shirt and was changing Matthew's diaper. She nodded happily. Mom said she never knew I could be such a big help. She let me feed Matthew all by myself four times. I even told my grandpa Charles how to burp him. He said he'll never even burp his own babies. Oh, said Pinky, not sure what else to say. Do you want to go out and play when you're finished? Can't, said Rex. Once Matthew goes down for his nap, I promised Mom I would help her start planning for the party on Saturday. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
Ugh. She turned her attention back to the baby. Pinky frowned, but Rex didn't even notice. She was too busy singing. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. <laughs> you can sing the rest <laughs> if you want to. Whoa. <laughs> Chapter 5 The Party. When Rex's family had the welcome home party for Matthew the following Saturday, it was the first time in a week Rex wasn't wearing a t shirt that read, I am a big sister. Instead, she wore a sweatshirt that read, Number one big sister. Where did you get that? Pinky asked in a tone of man that would have called snotty if she'd heard him. From my aunt Susan, Rex said. Okay, pass the page. Pinky noticed that she had a cloth diaper draped over her shoulder. What's that there for, he asked. In case the baby spits up, silly, Rex answered matter-of-factly. But you're not holding the baby, said Pinky. No, but I like to have it there just in case. <laughs> She's ready. Oh, that's so cute. So she liked them for the little baby. See? It's, this is kind of crooked, isn't it? The way I see it, it's crooked. There's a page. Pinky didn't want... Didn't wait around to find out in case of what. He rolled his eyes and headed for the punch bowl. What was going on anyway? Rex just wasn't her old self anymore. She never wanted to play with him. She never wanted to do anything but take care of the baby. For the next hour or so, Pinky and Amanda played with some of Rex's cousin. From time to time, Pinky checked to see what Rex was doing. She was always either holding Matthew or sitting next to whoever else was holding Matthew or running to get Matthew a bottle or a pacifier or a blanket or a toy. Oh my goodness. Poor thing. She, she likes to play and hold and help. <laughs> Once Pinky motioned to her to join him, and some of the other kids. For a moment, it looked as if she would. But then she just looked, shook her head. The game is starting, he heard someone say a short time later. What game? Pinky asked Ben, Rex's nine-year-old cousin. A World Cup soccer match on TV, Ben said. Want to watch? Pinky shrugged. He wasn't all that interested in soccer. Rex with the though Rex was what though <laughs> that's why he couldn't understand why she didn't join the others. Instead, Rex stayed right where she was, close to her mother and Matthew. Something was definitely wrong. Doesn't this say though? Right there. That doesn't make sense. Rex was do or da. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm reading you a story, but I can't even. I can't even explain it. <laughs> Chapter 6. The shopping trip. I'm glad I waited to buy a baby gift. Pinky's mother said as she pulled the car into the parking spot. You wouldn't believe all the things Matthew has already. But I know one thing he doesn't have. A toy chest. <gasps> Ooh, I had a toy chest my grandfather built me. And it was so big I could get inside. <laughs> and when they would call me sometimes, I would hide in it. And I would hear them calling, Oh, hey, where are you? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I know what I'm getting him. Amanda piped up as she unbuckled her seatbelt. She grabbed Poopsie and jumped out of the car. A 
teddy bear. <gasps> That's what I'm going to get, said Pinky. Pinky's parent had told both children they could get their own gift for Matthew. Too bad, said Amanda. Boopsy and I talked about it, and that's what we're getting. So you're outvoted two to one. Mom, now look, you two, I don't want any arguing. I know that Amanda has her heart set on a teddy bear, Pinky. Why don't you just let her get that for Matthew, and you can get another kind of stuffed animal, okay? Okay, Pink, Pinky mumbled. He knew his mother was expecting him to be mature. He hated it when he had to act like a big brother. Why did Rex think being a big sister was so great anyway? Woo! <laughs> oh, there it is. You're going to buy something. Oh, we know what you're going to get a teddy bear. Mom! Pinky said as they entered the store. Do you think Rex will ever be normal again? <laughs> what? <laughs> His mother smiled. But before she could answer, Amanda said, Rex is a girl. You're a boy. You don't understand these things. Right, Mom? Being a boy or a girl has nothing to do with it. Amanda. Oh. Pinky's mother turned to him. You miss Rex, don't you? She asked. Pinky nodded. Well, I think she misses you too. Really? Really, I think Rex is trying very hard to be the perfect big sister right now. She wants to be sure her parents don't forget about her. I know it's hard, but try to be patient. She'll be back to normal soon. Suddenly, Pinky spotted something. Mom, he said, can I buy a present for Rex too? <laughs> Oh, gosh. That is too cute. But there's another shirt there that says, let me see. Um, the big sister. <laughs> I hope she doesn't get another one of those. Can you imagine? Does she have four? <laughs> four shirts. I think that would be nice, said his mother. Then seeing what was hanging on the rack in front of them, she said, I don't think she needs another big sister t-shirt. Oh, I almost got that. That's not it, Pinky said. He reached for what he wanted to get her. His mother nodded. She'll love it, she said. Chapter 7, Back to Normal. Rex did love it. Wow, a dinosaur t-shirt. And I don't have one like it, Pinky. Where did you find it? Same place I got this, he said. Oh, that's so cute. Sometimes we gotta weigh and understand our friends and the things they're going through, right? All right. He handed her his present for Matthew. It was the last gift to be opened. While Pinky's family watched, Rex's mother had unwrapped the toy chest. Her father had unwrapped the teddy bear from Amanda. Now it was Rex's turn. A soccer ball, she asked. But Matthew is too little for a soccer ball. I know, said Pinky. I figure Matthew would like to have a soccer ball that's been broken in for him. You know, like the catcher's mate you said you were going to give him someday? Rex rolled the ball around in her hands. It's a beauty, she said. Just like the pros use. Oh, that was so sweet. Oh, look. That was really, really sweet. Okay, we're almost to the end. Just then, Matthew, who was lying in his carriage nearby, began to cry. Rex jumped up, but her mother stopped her. I'll get him, she said, putting down her tea. Why don't you go out and play for a little while? There's still some daylight left. Rex gave the soccer ball a loving look. Well, if you're sure it's okay. As Rex's mother picked Matthew up and propped him on her shoulder, she said, You've been terrific with the baby, but go out and have some fun. 
Before you know it, Matthew will be trailing around after you and you'll be complaining that he's a pain in the neck. <laughs> oh my goodness. So true. I learned that from my own children. They would be fighting and not two seconds later, they'd be like, I want to play again. I'm like, so confused. <laughs> Because when you're an only child, you don't know. So, um, I had to learn through my children <laughs> some of this stuff. I'll never think he's a pain in the neck, said Rex. Pinky poked Rex and nodded toward Amanda, who was tickling Poopsy under his chin and making little goo-goo noises. Rex looked long and hard at Amanda. Maybe Pinky and I will go out to play. Amanda jumped up. Wait for me, she shouted. No way, Pinky and Rex cried out together. <laughs> Amanda's eyes flared. Mom, Dad, I think they like to play by themselves right now, Amanda, said her father. Why don't you stay in here with us? We know how much you like babies. Maybe you can spend a little time with Matthew. Amanda dropped Popsy to the floor and crossed her arms. Not fair, she says, sticking out her lower lip. Like this. Mm. <laughs> she was pouting. Oh, my goodness. Look at her lips. Let's see, come closer. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. The fan is so high. Moments later, Pinky and Rex were kicking the soccer ball around the front yard. Watch this, Rex cried. She tossed the ball in the air and bounced it off her head. <gasps> Neat, huh? Pinky smiled. Rex was back to normal at last. Oh, the end. Even though it doesn't say it, but it's the end. <laughs> I hope you liked it. It was so cute. Very cute. Anyway, did you do your homework? Where is the weekend? Where are you going? What are you doing? Who gave you permission to go? <laughs> I hope you have a good Sunday because it's already Sunday. So, see you on the next one. Be good. For goodness sake. Can you believe it's almost Christmas? <gasps> what? Get your list ready. <laughs> <laughs>